Barbara, thanks for having a chat with me today. I appreciate your time. You're welcome. One of the new requirements, so to speak, for science members, science-based members of mm -hmm. academia, is that we have to tell our story, not just do great work. Right. Would you agree with that statement? I think so. I, I mean, there's a lot of processes that go to make an innovation or a technology or even just a discovery in science that need to be uh, shown to the public so people can understand how things happen and not necessarily just the wow factor. So in that way you can actually be able to communicate better with different people, the community, the industry, and they can understand all the steps and have a little bit more of confidence of what you're doing and what sort of information you're releasing. And a lot of the information is not necessarily a big breakthrough. It can be also general information that can be useful for people to develop new technologies and just like a, a framework for all their things to happen. Right. And frameworks are pretty critical to communicating properly, aren't they? Exactly. So you have to be able to communicate every step of the process and more like if you're, if you're a scientist in academia, is kind of your responsibility to do so. Well said, well said. Can you tell me a little bit about your research and, and how it specifically relates to the seed industry? Well, I'm a fruit person. Yep. I study fruit and I study how to make fruit more um, with a higher quality, more nutritious, uh, safer, as well as to have like all these properties that the industry is also looking for for their varieties. So in that way, we have some you know, similarities. So what you develop and understand by understanding fruit, you can understand different varieties and how to uh, basically guide breeding. So that's one thing that I think it relates to the seed industry. The other thing is that I work with post-harvest. Mm. And post-harvest is important as well for the seed industry because there are several technologies that are similar. For instance, how do you maintain seed with vigor? Uh, you basically, with the vigor that you want for your customers, uh, you develop a cold chain generally. How do you maintain the seed? Um, you also want to know uh, basically what seed lot to, will show first and, and which one doesn't and a lot of that relates with respiration and seeds and fruit respire so there's a lot of similarities. Indeed, indeed. So we have over 350 of what I would consider the smartest people in the field attending the Soul Genomics Conference, mm -hmm. the 13th annual Soul Genomics Conference right. here in at UC Davis, which of course you are a part of. Do you take a real structured approach to your when you're attending an event like this? For example, do you set specific expectations for the event or, or goals that you have set from attending? Or is it a more free-flowing, let the conversations happen as they, as they will? Well, I think it's a combination. When you're a young scientist and you want to like break through the community, you have to have some goals. You want to show yourself and show your research and be able to establish new collaborations. So that's sort of some of the goals I have uh, established before in a way. But I think it's, again, it's a conversation. So it's, it's free-flowing. You have to be able to adapt to the people you meet and so on. Right. Is there anyone in particular that you were looking forward to meeting at this uh, particular conference? You know what? I, I wanted to talk more with industry people. Mm -hmm. So here in Davis, we, have, we are really lucky that we have a lot of people around and they come to Seed Central and other events. But I mean, in this case, it was the first time that I will show myself as an assistant professor, as a part of the academia in more of a responsible role. So I wanted to showcase that to the industry. So that's more of my goal because scientists Scientific meetings will come up later on that we can talk about science, but I think the, there's a lot of uh, really um, focus on communicating with industry in this conference in particular. Gotcha. Right. Have you attended this particular conference before? No. No. First time. First time. Why is it important for you to, for you to attend a conference like this, come together with your colleagues from around the world? Right, well I'm starting to work on tomatoes uh, as my main focus for my research and therefore I wanted to establish, uh, as, a, as I said just before, a good communication with the people that are working and that are really doing fantastic work on understanding ripening and disease and so on in, in tomato and other Solanaceae species. Excellent. So if you had 10 seed executives standing in front of you, you had their undivided attention, Okay. what would you tell them? Well, <laughs> that's a hard question. Um, what I will tell them basically is that it's important to be attending some of these meetings or basically, again, establishing means of communication because 
people in academia are interested in helping them and we have common goals and even though it cannot be that obvious at the beginning, once you start talking, you are able to find that. And just investing in their own people, empowering women, empowering people in academia, is basically the same ideas that we all have, basically to improve our agriculture and improve our commodities and our breeding lines and so on. So there's a lot of, <coughs> sorry, there's a lot of common goals that can be explored by just communicating with faculty from the university and so on. So I think that's <clears throat> what I will say to them if I talk. In more detail, of course. Perfect. Thank you very much, Barbara. You're welcome. I appreciate your time. It's nice meeting you.